Hey guys, I just made a post in the Oklahoma City Real Estate Facebook group about using a buyer broker agreement. I wanted to address that and why it's important and you should be using that for every one of your buyers because it is going to establish you as a higher level professional and it's going to give you and your client transparency about how you get paid. Okay, I'm going to explain that to you. When I first start working with a new buyer client, I always like to schedule a preliminary buyer consultation meeting. And this is usually one hour at a coffee shop, wherever they're located, um, so that we can talk about the process of what it looks like to buy a house, what they can expect from me, what I can expect from them, and just establish um, you know, our working relationship moving forward. So first things first, um, I have a buyer presentation packet of information that I created several years ago. And within the first page or two, I start right into buyer agent loyalty and what this means. So I have a list here of all the different things that I am going to provide, all the different services I provide up front for my buyers. And then I have a list of all the things that I expect from them in return. And that looks like I'm going to listen to your wants and needs. I'm going to spend time and effort searching for a home that meets your specific criteria. I'm going to represent your best interest in the purchase of your home. I'm going to provide cost estimates for you so that you never get to the closing table and are surprised by how much you're going to have to pay at closing or on a monthly basis. I'm going to do a comparative market analysis on your potential home to determine the true market value. I'm going to keep you informed and updated throughout the process. And I'm going to communicate with your lender to make sure that there are no delays um, and that we meet closing date. Um, on the flip side, what I expect from my clients is that they're going to call or text me anytime that there's a property that they want to see. They're going to arrive on time to our showing appointments. They're going to allow me to submit any written or verbal offers on their behalf. They're going to trust my expertise. I've been doing this a long time. I'm a good agent and uh, you know, trust me that I know what I'm doing and I'm going to protect you through this process. Cooperate with the lender. If the lender asks you for certain information or documentation to do your loan, get it to them on a timely manner. You're not gonna work with any other realtors, okay? Buyer agent loyalty, I'm doing all these things up front. I'm not getting paid for that until closing. So I expect, I expect loyalty. If you're loyal to me, I'm loyal to you, okay? And then let me know. If there's something that you're not happy with in as far as the service that I'm providing, talk to me about it. Um, give me an opportunity to, to do better, okay? Or if you are unhappy and you don't wanna work together anymore, let me know and we don't have to, we can cancel this buyer broker agreement. So after I've gone over what it means to have buyer agent loyalty, I flip to the next page and then we talk about does it cost money to work with a realtor? I think this is something that buyers want to know because they they just don't know any better. You have to explain it to them, okay? If you are telling people, it doesn't cost you any money to work with a realtor, or my services are free to you, I'm not getting, you, you don't have to pay me. That's not necessarily true and you shouldn't be saying that, okay? That devalues ourselves as professionals in this industry. So I wanna encourage you to use this script instead. Does it cost money to work with a realtor? Sometimes yes, most of the time no. And now is a really great time to bring up your buyer broker agreement. I'm not gonna go through this whole document. You guys can read it yourself and highlight what you want to kind of talk about with your buyers. Um, but I do wanna point out that there's good opportunities here to discuss um, You know, if you are working with both sides of the transaction. So if you have a, a seller or a house for sale and the buyer wants to buy that, you can address that here. I can make a whole separate video of appropriate ways to handle that. Um, you know, maybe you wanna refer that buyer out to another agent and just get a referral fee so the buyer feels like like there's not a conflict of interest there. Um, you know, maybe you do work both sides and feel comfortable doing that. It, as long as the buyer is okay with that, it gives you an opportunity to talk about it, okay? Transparency, it's important. And the other thing is buyer's acknowledgement. This is a section that acknowledges that the buyer is not in an agreement to work with another agent um, and talk about that. Like, you know, you're, you're hiring me. Joe and Susie referred you to me because they had a great experience working with me last time and they feel like you'd be in good hands when you work with me. Um, you know, like you're not going to be working with someone else. If you have signed another agreement with another agent and you don't want to work with that agent anymore and you want to work with me, 
please go talk to your agent. Let them know that you want to get out of that agreement and you are unhappy with their service. That is only fair, right? We're not trying to snake people's clients. We want to have a, a professional standard across the board, how we treat our clients, how our trans clients treat us, and how we treat other professionals in our industry. The buyer is not going to hold us responsible for finding any latent defects on the property. So if something breaks after they buy the house, they're not going to hold us responsible for not having told them about that. We're not licensed home inspectors. That's not our job. Duration of the agreement. We are, you know, you may decide to work with this client on a 30 day trial run. Maybe you want to sign in the agreement for six months. Who knows? But you, you talk about how long this agreement is going to be in place. If at any point during our working relationship, you are unhappy with my service and you would like to get out of this agreement, come and talk to me. I'm happy to do that. We'll put this in the shredder. No harm, no foul. All right, number six, compensation of broker. Guys, this is a big one. This is why you use this document, okay? This document is not intended to force a buyer to work with you that doesn't wanna work with you. This document is to protect your commission and your professionalism. Compensation to broker. I have selected the second box, okay? Not the first box. I'm not gonna take whatever a seller's willing to pay me because I know my value, okay? My value is not what a seller says, my value is what I say. So, buyer shall pay the broker at closing an amount equal to X percent of the gross selling price, okay? You are hiring me as your professional to represent you in the home, home purchase. I charge X percent. Okay, most of the time, a seller is going to say up front, hey, buyers, I'm offering to pay X percent towards your agent commission, okay? Occasionally, and if those numbers are the same, so if a seller has offered to pay an amount that covers my full commission, you don't have to pay anything. You get a credit for that. Occasionally, a seller might say, hey, I'm only willing to pay Y percent or Y point Z percent. In that situation, you would have to be responsible to pay the difference. Is that fair to you? 100% of the time, my clients say yes. Yeah, that sounds fair. Okay, I don't negotiate my hairstylist fee. I don't negotiate my car mechanics fee. That's this, the fee that they set, that's their value. If I don't wanna pay that fee, I will go work with someone else. It's pretty simple. You guys need to set your value. That's what this document is for. This is to protect your business. This is when I tell them that if, I will always let you know what the commission is offered on a listing so that if you might end up having to pay some of that, you're gonna know that in your um, cost estimates before you even write an offer on the property. You're gonna know in the cost estimate if you're gonna have to pay anything also we can write it into the contract to negotiate that the seller will pay my, my full commission. That that's, we can do that. All right. So you need to be very transparent about how you get paid, how much your fees are, and that the buyer might have some responsibility there to cover any difference that the seller is not willing to pay. All right. This makes you a professional. Commissions payable upon closing. If we work together for six months and we go under contract three different times and you ultimately don't buy a house and you've got a job change and you move out of state and you don't buy a house, you don't have to pay me. There's no obligation there, okay? Pay commission is only payable upon closing. Oftentimes, I will be working with other people. So I, you are not my only client. I have others that I'm working with. Some of those clients might be looking in the same price point. So just be aware, I'm a professional and I work with multiple clients at once but I'm going to do my best job to give you all of my attention. If this seems fair to you and you would like to work together and hire me as your realtor, here's where you sign. Done. Your commission is protected, guys. Like, let's be professional about this. Let's start using these buyer broker agreements. I feel like I rambled a lot. Um, I have said this so many times when I'm in front of buyers, it comes out Easy, easy. I mean, this is, I don't stumble over my words when I'm working with clients because I've said this a hundred thousand times. When you are confident 
in your, in your ability as an agent and you are confident and you value yourself, your clients will value you as well. Okay. Set the bar, set the tone of your working relationship and they will respect you. And if they don't, you can fire them as clients. It's okay. Good luck. I hope you all start using the buyer broker agreement. It's there. Learn it, use it. You'll appreciate it. One last thing I almost forgot. I do have a little section in here in my um, buyer informational packet that talks about working with for sell by owners. I explain to my buyers, you know, you might come across a property on Zillow or realtor.com that is listed for sell by owner. As long as you have me make that first contact with the seller, most often those sellers are willing to pay a, a buyer agent commission. They just don't want to pay a listing agent commission. You know, sellers think that they know what they're doing and good for them for, for doing that. But most people are willing to pay my commission. If I make that first contact and we sign a um, compensation agreement between me and that seller before we go look at the house, then you don't have to pay my commission, okay? Uh, or if they are, refuse to pay my commission, you, it is certainly your right to go and enter into a legal and binding contract without realtor representation. You can do that. I wouldn't advise it. I wouldn't advise representing yourself in court either, but you can do that if you want. Anyway, that's how I, that's how I address for sell by owners. Um, you know, my clients are really receptive on this. I've never had anybody like say that they felt like that was unfair or that they didn't want to work with me because of, you know, a buyer agent agreement. Like I've just never had anybody say that. And if they do, then they don't respect me as a professional and we just weren't meant to work together. That's, that's all. That's the bottom line. Value yourself as a professional, your clients will too. You know, there are going to be times when you might get screwed and buyers will sign the agreement and they decide that they still want to go work with someone else. Let them go. Let them go. There is other business out there. If people are not valuing you, then you don't want to work with them anyway. 